Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. Today, I want to talk to you about Flyway Desktop and its support for Postgres SQL. And let's just go ahead and get started with it. Now, we could work on existing projects. Happy to look, show you the one of those. But instead, what we're going to do is walk through the entire process of creating a new project. So this could be a brownfield or a greenfield project. It almost doesn't matter. What we're going to do is go ahead and get started. And first, we need to select a folder where we're going to place our stuff. Now, I'm absolutely going to put it into GitHub and post it online. So we'll select this folder to get started. This is our location for all my GitHub stuff. And now we're going to give our new project a name. This is Hamshack Radio, and we're going to get going with that. Now we get to choose our database engine. We currently support SQL Server, Oracle, and Postgres. We are working on getting all of the rest of these databases supported fully through Flyway Desktop, but right now the full support is just with SQL Server, Oracle, and Postgres SQL. Let's go ahead and do this, create our project, and get going. Now that's created the project, and that's great. But what we need to do is actually link to a database. This is all about doing development. This is all about making changes, controlling those changes, getting them into source control, and tracking them over time. So the first thing we're going to do is link up with our development database. So I'm going to choose to go into here. Now I've got my local host and on the default port. Now the database is going to be HSR Dev, Hamshack Radio Development. The schema we're going to go after, we'll go after public for now. We can look at those later. I've got a simple setup right now for security, and we can walk through that. Obviously, you can change the way it stores that information. I'm going to go ahead and save it here. Or you could just post in directly the full um, JDBC connection yourself. Um, and edit that. Now let's go ahead and test that, validate that it's working. It succeeded, so we're good to go. What we're going to do is say test and save. And so now it's starting a comparison project. So what it's doing is it's comparing what I have currently in my source control system, which is nothing because that's a, a blank folder, to the existing set of structures already in my database. And so I have four tables that we've been working on, a couple of sequences, and one foreign key, as you see there. So we've got a full-blown database already under development. So this would effectively be a brownfield project. We're not doing something new. We're doing something existing. Now, we can select all of these. And once they're selected, then we get to save them to our project. And basically, this is one of several views into the way everything is managed within Flyway Desktop. Now we've got the schema model where, where we've got our actual schemas. We've got the ability to generate migrations. We have the ability to look at the migrations we've generated. And then we have the ability to control our version control and our source control connections and everything else. Now to start with, I want to save this to my project because we've got to get started someplace. And this is the best place to start because like I said, we've already got an existing database. So we will now save that to project. It is retrieving everything into uh, a local set of, of repositories. And we can take even take a look at that. What was done was these uh, files were created. So we've now got those locally. And we can commit these changes. Or we can start looking at generating migrations. Now, we're not ready for migrations yet. The whole idea of migrations is for when you're ready to do cross system deployments. We're ready to move to the QA to, um, division. We're ready to move into production. And so you don't generate migrations when you're working. When you're working, you stick within the schema model and make all of your changes there. So now we've got all this set up. We're good to go. We don't have to do anything else. But what if we wanted to? What if we wanted to generate some migrations? Well, let's go ahead and say, you know, we're going to generate the migrations. Now, the first thing the migrations needs is a shadow database, a place to run those migrations to validate that things are going to work. So what we're going to need to do is set up a shadow database. Now, before we do that, we need to have a database. So let me switch back over here. I'm going to run create database 
for HSR Shadow, for, for Hamshack Radio Shadow Database. Switch back to Flyway Desktop, and now we can set it up. So again, it's localhost with the default port. The database that we're looking at is the one we just created, Hamshack Radio. And again, I'm going to use the um, existing credentials that I have. I'm going to go ahead and test the connection again, just because, you know, I'm a little paranoid. want to make sure we get it right. Okay, good. It worked. Um, now we can say, is it okay to erase data inside this database? There's no need in this case, but you could want to do that. I'm, I'm going to leave it off for now. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to say okay, because uh, we actually need to do the full test. Um, there is no data, so there's no fear here. So now it's starting the comparison between what I have in source control and what is on my existing database. Now the fact is there's nothing on my database. So if we're going to generate migrations, this is the set of migrations that we would want to generate. And again, we could click on them, um, click on them as individuals, say, oh, well, what if we only wanted to generate for the radios table, for example? And then we could generate the scripts right over here on that button. But what we're going to do instead is we're not going to select any of these. Instead, you'll notice we have a prompt. We've not yet created a baseline, a start point for all of the deployment and development that we're going to do. So first, let's create a baseline. So let's go ahead and connect up to a database. We'll do the same thing as before, localhost, default port. I have a database already called Hamshack Radio. This is not production. It is a clean copy of my production database stored locally. Uh, so we're protecting our production environment. And let's make sure I didn't fat finger the uh, password. Cool. That's all good. Let's hit test and save. And now let's establish a baseline. So what it's doing is it's comparing the existing database to the scripts that we have, and it's found that um, it's all the same. It's ready to go. This is the migration script that would be for uh, our baseline for any new databases that we create. So let's go ahead and hit Save. And so now we have a baseline database, and that's great. So we're all set up. We can even take a look at it in the migrations, and you see that it's version 1, it's got the date um, timestamp on it by default. We could change that if we wanted to, and but this is all set up and ready to go. And it's let us know that it is a baseline. It gave us a description already, and so we're ready to go. Now from here, we could start talking about migration, adding to new databases, where we would like to do deployments. We're not ready for that. Let's just go back to schema model. Now the thing is, is that this is all about development. So what if we were developing? Well, let's go back over to here. Let's say we want to create a new table. And we'll just call it my new table. And we'll just put a single column into it. And that's it. Just for example purposes, we're going to create a new table on our database. Now we could do this any number of ways. You could, you know, however you want to run it, however you want to run your edits, creating things. We just need to make sure that we're in the right database, development, and now we can run this and we've created a new table inside the database. Now let's go back over to Flyway Desktop and we've got the schema model. Let's refresh our schema. So it's again, it's running a comparison between what we already have locally in our source control and it's showing you the path that exists, and then it's showing you the new thing that we've created. And we created that new table, my new table, ID, int4, all set up exactly the way we expected. Now the thing to notice is, is we could save this to project right now, and it's ready to go. We can click on it, um, again, individually or as a group, um, if there's more than one change, and then we can commit that to our project. Or, let's say this was created by accident, or there's an error, or Better still, let's say that we're working on a different branch of code and we want to make pull from um, the uh, branched code and put this into our database. We could instead apply to the database. So we, where we have a table in the database, this would then remove it 
from that database. Now that's not what I want to do right now. Instead, I am going to go ahead and save it to the project. So we will select this. We will save the project. That then has put it into our, our project. We're good to go. Um, we can take a look at and generate migrations for this new thing. Let's go ahead and close the existing stuff. So it's going to run again the comparison, validating what's in the shadow database with what's in our source control system. And it arrives at the same place again. We've got a couple of things that are different. Um, we had um, a one table that got created that wasn't um, there before and a table that was missing from our shadow database. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and generate scripts for all of them. There we go. Now here's where we can decide if we want to use the existing schema naming or if we want to say, hey, you know what, putting my name in there is not actually descriptive. Let's put in something else. Let's put in, you know, um, fixing missing tables. So we've got tables that we're missing and, and we're making sure that they get ba added back in. Now you can, um, of course, add some underscores in here if you want to. It will change the way the documentation is done within Flyway. Um, it's all up to you how you guys want to manage this stuff. Um, you can do it any way you like. But the important part here, here is right here, in ensuring that you've got a good schema versioning number and that's all set. So now if I hit save, that migration is now committed, I can hit close, or I can go to the folder where that's at. So let's um, let's go take a look. It opens up the folder and we can see each of those. If we back out a little bit, we can take a look and see our migrations. And so there are the two migrations that we've created, the baseline itself and then the VO2. Um, so they're all in there, all set up the way we would expect to see them. We've also got the JSON and the configuration for Flyway for it to be able to do the stuff. And it's already even set up Git Ignore so that some of our information that shouldn't go into our source control system is not available. Now from here, what we could do is um, initialize Git. So now we've created this as a Git repository. So if we go back to, to Flyway Desktop, if we take a look at version control, it's not going to think that this is version control. So what we're going to do is close this project and reopen it because we did initialize source control underneath the project. So now we can come back in here. It's, it's again running the comparison to see if anything has been changed. Nothing has. We Obviously with nothing changed, we can't generate migrations. But now if we take a look at version control, sure enough, all the stuff that we've created, all the information that we've walked through as we've done this session are all there now. And so what we can do is just say initialize project in Flyway Desktop. With that, everything is selected. We can now commit. And now all of that stuff is committed into the local Git repository. And so as we make our changes, they're all committed locally. And when we're ready, um, if we need to, we can branch, um, push, um, pull from other branches, whatever you needed to do, you've got a way to control it through here. And so this gives you a complete way to set up, control, generate scripts for all of the things that you need to do within your PostgreSQL database. It's pretty exciting stuff. We're really moving into a, a whole new multi-platform world, and um, I'm excited to see PostgreSQL as part of it. That's it for today. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.